right, so I'm going to show you guys something pretty cool that uh, I have put in the plane by Garmin. It's the Aira. E e e I have no idea how to pronounce that. I probably should have looked it up before, but hey, we're all friends here. 660. A uh, little GPS type thing that can be tied into a uh, the Garmin GDL line of uh, ADSB receivers, which I've got right here, the GDL 50 by Garmin. Uh, this one's just got the ADSB um, and then the GPS. That's all I really need. Uh, the one that's above this has the <clears throat> Cirrus Weather, so you can get the the weather through the Cirrus subscription. I kind of figured, what's the use in that? I compared the two. The GDL 50 is the way to go. It's a little bit uh, less expensive. So, hey, I'm going to go with that. Coming off from a uh, Stratix, or yes, Stratix, I guess you would say. Um, it was uh, it was a bit of money, but put these together, and it really makes it worth it. It's pretty awesome. So uh, that is a drawback of this GPS and really a lot of the garments, they won't work from the uh, Stratus or the Stratus, the home built type or the uh, commercially available one. So really in the box, there's not a whole lot. Uh, there is a yoke mount, which is pretty cool. You can attach it to your yoke and it actually looks really good that way. Um, I'll show you in the plane just a second. I've actually opted for, a, uh, for another mount. Um, but comes with the instruction booklet, the yoke mount, which is not here anymore, the AC adapter here, and the transfer cable. You can do transfers over the air, or you can do uh, transfers if you hook it up to a computer. Use uh, Garmin software to do the updates if you want to update the, uh, the maps on here. Additionally, I have a code over there for a free update. When you purchase one of these guys, you get a, um, a free aviation database update um, code so you always have the uh, or you will not always that'd be nice you will have the update code for the uh, for the maps on here so pretty cool how this works uh, I'll show you over here one last thing I want to tell you about the GDL though because I really won't go over it uh, in much detail because it pretty straightforward. It's uh, the ADSB, the GPS, and then it's got the um, AHRS, I believe. Um, the thing that tells the actual um, device here, the synthetic, uh, <laughs> synthetic display, um, where you're at in, in space. So um, the, the pitch of your plane, um, it'll, it'll tell you that. So it's pretty straightforward. It runs off of batteries. It uh, lasts for eight hours on the battery. I have mine hooked up all the time to external battery. Yeah, I guess I can show you that. Why not? So let's go over and I'll show you this real quick, how I've got it set up in my plane. And then the actual reason I'm making this video is this guy right here. You do not need this for this. The only reason I have this for this is because I want to have uh, ADSB traffic uh, broadcast to the GPS unit, um, and that's that's really it. Uh, the traffic and the weather—it's uh, free weather, of course, when you get ADSB in. So I'll show you this real quick, and then I'll go over the features of the uh, the 660. We'll just call it the 660. All right, and here's the little brief uh, GDL 50 setup I've got here. It's got a nice little sticky base, so that's not going to creep around anywhere on you. I keep this in the back hat rack all the time, uh, ready to go. And down there is a large battery backup. I'll throw both of these in the comments below if you're interested in that. This is a uh, generator, as they call it. Um, just a big battery, big lithium-ion battery. I haven't charged that in forever. Um, like I said, eight hours on that guy. I just use this because I love that. I don't want to go dead in the air. I always forget to charge these things. <laughs> so even with eight hours of charge, I still have that battery back up there. So that's pretty much the gist. It's, it's pretty simple. It's a power button on the 
side there, you hit the power button, it connects to the GPS or the satellites there for your GPS navigation. And then the ADSB will give you the weather and the traffic. So pretty straightforward. Um, it's a nice solid unit. I haven't had any issues with it since I've had it, and I've had it since Christmas. But um, like I said, there's a few different flavors of this. This is the least expensive but it basically gives you exactly what you want, which is weather and traffic. Um, and then your, uh, then your attitude as well, because it has that little chipset in there. So let's, uh, let's go to the fun stuff in front. Okay, so here we go. Um, just did an avionics upgrade. I'll show you the left side of the plane, but um, be completely honest with you. I'll give you a sneak peek. That's the 175 Garmin. It's a really nice Garmin radio, however, however if you're not flying IFR, I, 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 you don't need it. You really don't. Uh, this works perfectly. It's a little bit easier to uh, handle than that. Um, it's just this will give you the LPVs and all that other kind of jazz for IFR. But a lot of I know uh, pilots out there are VFR only, flight visual rules only. Um, so this is this is more than enough and everything that you would need for a very long time. So I've got it uh, got the plane hooked up to the charger so I can show you what this looks lit up. Um, very simple, nothing crazy. I've got it uh, hooked up here using the 12 volt adapter that comes with it. Nothing nothing too uh, too wild about it. Uh, nothing's permanent. Everything is. Um, legal. Uh, it's got the little air gizmo thing on there. That's how it's recessed back in the uh, back in the plane. There, everything's kind of a temporary deal. You can take everything out. You can take this out if you want. I got a little latch there that pops out. This thing can pop out if you need it to. And then this is the power button switch. So, air gizmo has built uh, this for many GPS, for many aircraft, and um, it, it works wonderfully. So I'm going to try to adjust the, uh, the balance here. The lighting is horrible. Uh, but as you can see, my charts have not been updated. It's something on the to-do list. I'm going to use that code to update uh, my GPS very soon. It's, it's pretty simple to do the updates. But what I'm going to do is go through a couple of key functions here, show you what it looks like in the air. Um, and I apologize quite a bit for the uh, quality of this. I just don't really know the best way to uh, record this. Either it's going to be too light or too dark. So, a couple features here. Um, map is going to be primarily your uh, VFR um, sectional type map. So if you scroll out here, uh, I, I apologize, it's the aeronautical map here. Um, really easy. It's got the normal, if you've messed with any Garmin software, any Garmin GPS, this will come second nature to you. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, when it connects to the Garmin GDLs, it will show weather, uh, and then it will show traffic. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to just kind of move in and out here. And I'm sitting at, uh, FCI. So it's got the tracks, so it shows everywhere that I've been. I usually clear those out before every flight, just because I find it kind of messy. You can turn it off completely, but as soon as I turn it off, I'm sure I'll want uh, <laughs> the tracks on there for, for some reason. These are your map options for the map that we're currently looking at. You've got the VFR, and then you've got the IFR overlay if you want to do that, even though that this is not um, for the purpose of IFR, uh, unless it's back up, if you want that. Topo shading, that's pretty much a straightforward thing. Terrain will give you terrain detail. Uh, if you've messed with any GPS and pretty much anything, you'll know that... Um, the terrain and the topo shading, what they do, but basically it will show the terrain um, for you and it will turn those wonderful red colors when you're too close. Uh, weather will show weather. Uh, I always do the animate weather, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you've got the GDL, it'll animate the weather. Pretty straightforward, right? Um, fuel prices and traffic. I default to traffic, don't care about fuel prices. Not because I'm rich or anything, by any means. I just use uh, another application, uh, i.e. floor flight, uh, for that. Uh, we can measure distance, um, and we can change the data fields, uh, graphically edit the flight, 
flight plan. Once we've entered a flight plan, it's got the weather legend if you want to display that. Um, let me just kind of show you that. You can move these around or you can change them. Um, I like I like a lot of data on my map, so I, I've got it kind of busy, but I actually I prefer that. Um, this is your, v, uh, yes, your VFR charts. If you want to look at the VFR charts, um, all the U.S. is loaded, so you can, you can go all around here, and it will have the detailed VFR charts. Pretty, uh, pretty cool, pretty straightforward chart type. There we go. I can move that to VFR, IFR, or helicopter even. And uh, same thing, graphically flight, uh, view the flight plan if I want to edit it. Uh, change data fields. Remember what the data fields were before on the other map? Uh, same thing. So to center the plane you just click that little button and to zoom in you just use it like an iPad. It's extremely bright. That's why it's actually um, washing out everything else around it. It will have a night mode which is pretty nifty and very handy. So once it starts getting dark, this will this whole display will change. It's really neat how it works. Um, let me show you. If I wanted to go direct to, you've got all of your options up here. And since it's a large touchscreen, it's super easy to select the waypoint. I'll just do one real quick. Select waypoint. Uh, let's do... And it's full keyboard. K O F. Wow, it is hard to, there we go, Hanover. And, you know, you're bumping all around in your plane. It's a lot easier to do it with a full keyboard. You'll see that uh, the info's up here. Uh, if I want info around, I've got frequency, runways, all the weather information when I connect to the GDL. Notums, you get the idea. AOPA, if you've got a, um, oh, and your charts, which are pretty cool. Uh, you can change the charts like this. Just press that button and then it gives you all of the charts if you want to view those. Um, you can change your flight plan there. Nearest airports is a really handy button to have, as everyone would know. And then your recents. Uh, all of your recents there. And this is on both of the maps. 3D vision, which is an interesting thing be completely honest with you, it's cool looking. Uh, if you're in IFR conditions and needed to declare emergency and this is all you had, um, it would be a help. It really would. All this lights up when uh, the GPS is activated. Um, so uh, the GPS internal to this, you don't actually need the GDL for this other than the attitude. So <clears throat> this is pretty nifty. Uh, the menu options on here. Um, if you want the tapes or the round gauges on here, uh, and then the VNAV options here, you've got the GPS bearing pointers if you want to do that or if you want to go manual. And then it just goes on and on. It's, it's pretty crazy. And it'll also show traffic, which is really nifty. Nearest will give you, of course, nearest uh, waypoints, whether it be um, the airports or the VFR or the VORs rather, so on and so forth. So nearest will give you the nearest, um, well, waypoint. Waypoints are literally that, waypoints. So you can get information about the waypoints. It's just another way of doing it if you want to do that. So you would enter in the information about the waypoint that you're interested in by clicking that bar right there, so on and so forth. Hit enter there. And then you can just scroll down and figure out what's going on. If it's a VOR, it'll give you frequencies and all that type of jazz. Flight plan list is literally just that. You can do the uh, flight plan list. This is VFR only, but you can uh, set it up for like an RNAV approach uh, if you're interested in uh, doing that or practicing or if you're studying for the IFR uh, exam you can actually play around with this and fly the approaches with, of course, uh, not actually rating them in. Um, active flight plan will show you what you're at, and that's pretty straightforward. Traffic data, if you've messed with any of the Garmin uh, devices, the only difference is, is that you get to use your fingers or the buttons over here to zoom in and out. And then you have your menu options, which I I've never messed with menu options. I don't even know what's there. I don't care. 
terrain will give you terrain information. So that is, um, this little map's pretty cool because it will show you um, the distance between you and, it'll give you a topographic map. That's basically what's going to happen. So it'll be kind of like this. So you'll see, oh, six miles out, you have something that's 6,000 feet, and you may want to avoid that if you're flying 4,000. Um, and then, of course, it will give you uh, the colors. Everybody knows about the colors, right? So, you know, if it's red, you're, you're not going to do too well. And then the menu options here uh, will show you, well, all the options, wire obstacles, so on and so forth. And then um, if you want to get any type of cautions, so anything 10,000 below, I'm going to get cautions on. If I go here, traffic, okay, let's go to... Uh, weather. This will just give you uh, weather information from a high contrast map. Notice there's no airports, nothing. Uh, you can even knock this down uh, even more if you want to get through these, uh, get rid of these uh, city names. So this is pretty cool if you want to do a cross country or something to that effect and you want to keep an eye on you know what's going on pretty far out from you so this is this is handy. I switch to this every so often because uh, the other map you know pretty busy. This shows you the outline of the state where you're at and just the weather, which is kind of nice. And like I said, if you uh, click on weather, click on menu, you can, uh, you can adjust the, the detail to most to least. And I'll knock it all the way down there and you can see behind me that it gets rid of all of the, uh, all the names of the uh, cities there. Weather legend on and off and animate weather I always like to keep on just to kind of see the flow uh, of where it's going. Maybe a storm or something to that effect. Um, <clears throat> let's go back. GPS info is just that. GPS info if you can't connect correctly uh, or if something's going on you can kind of figure out what's going, uh, what's happening there. G our position uh, we'll give you longitude and latitude if for some reason you need to call that out um, for whatever reason. Tools is just that. You've got user waypoints, track log. Like I said, the track log is the little dots. E6B, I mean, this is cool, but who really uses this? If you do, that's awesome. Good for you. Um, electronic flight books have it, plus you have computers and all kinds of other man. Uh, <laughs> ways of doing it but uh, hey it's it's here if you like it and I won't uh, I, I, you know it's you if you want uh, weight and balance same different things so this is basically all calculator type deals and then flight logs uh, will keep track of your logs which is pretty cool if you ever get uh, confused VNAV stuff and then it just goes on uh, this is for Garmin's camera if you want to connect to their action cam, which, yeah, teach his own. So that's the general gist of the GPS. It gives you pretty much everything that you would ever really need to have in a GPS unit. Um, it is pretty, you know, that's, that's my hands there. So that gives you an idea of, you know, how big it is. So go back to that view there. But uh, it fits real well in, in my little right corner there of my Piper. Uh, like I said, I got the upgrade of the 175 and the G5s, which I'm going to go on about. But, uh, yeah, it, you know, honestly, if I uh, wasn't doing the IFR thing, I no reason to spend money on the, the 175 or anything, uh, anything past that. It's really just depending on what you're going to be using these guys for. But this is, uh, this is a pretty neat option. It's well under $1,000. Um, and it goes on sale quite uh, readily. So if you want just the GPS, go for it. It gives you all the features there with the only exception of it doesn't give you uh, real-time weather or traffic unless you get a GDL unit, similar to the one in the back there. Um, so there's there's multiple different tiers of this GDL thing that Garmin uh, has, uh, has a lock on. So, yeah, if anybody has any questions below, I will, uh, I'll answer them for you. And then also I will post the link to this guy, because you can just literally get it off of Amazon, which is pretty awesome. That's how I got it. Uh, the gizmo, uh, if you're interested in that, which is probably the best way to mount it, second to the uh, yoke mount. 
Um, it's it's very similar to the Ram mount actually, which is pretty awesome. You don't pay anything extra for it; it comes with it. And then uh, the GDL unit in the back, if you're interested in the uh, GDL 50. Now, of course, this isn't sponsored or anything. It's just out of the research I've done, this is probably the best fit for what I'm looking for. And uh, so far, it is more than exceeded my expectations. So, till next time, stay thrifty, guys.